Hey y'all, welcome back to another ballistics gel test. Today we've got some Cellier and Bell at the old SNB 150 grain soft point and 3030 Winchester. And here is the box for that Cellier and Bell at 3030 ammunition. Cellier and Bellet doesn't put a whole lot on their boxes. I'll flip it to the side here. You can see their ballistics information. This is billed at 2,389 feet per second. We'll see how close we get to that. That's pretty standard for 150 grain, 3030 ammo. Winchester and Remington usually build their 150 grainers at 2,390 feet per second. So this is right there. There's really nothing on the back besides a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at the ammo. These boxes open from the top and bottom as opposed from the side. Here they are, I'm gonna yank one out. And there it is, nothing fancy, nothing special, just a classic 30-30 soft point. Let's go shoot it and see how it does. And my test rifle today is gonna to be my 1980s vintage Glenfield Model 30A, basically a Marlin Model 336. It has a 20 inch barrel up top. I have a vintage Leopold M84X scope. And bringing up the rear, of course, I have one of my Mason leather cartridge cuffs. I've got the caliber stamped into it right there. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would absolutely love to make you one. And let's come around to the other side. I wanna show you, I've got my white tail deer design on this one. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting that Cellier and Bellet 150 grain 3030 load. And that stuff is cooking right along. You'll see the velocity here in a second. This stuff is flying. And we did manage to capture two bullets. Let's go ahead and just look at penetration. Looks like we got one at 19 inches. We'll give it, it's a hair under, but we'll give it 19. And then the second one right at 20 inches. And they do look like they got really, really good consistent mushrooming. They look like little toadstools in there. Of course, we'll dig them out in a second and take a look. Um, I tried to capture another bullet for y'all, but this stuff was shooting really, really high as compared to my zero. And I just wasn't able to do it. And I'll try and show you the wound track. And it's a little bit hard to see, but it starts opening up at about the two inch mark and it goes on back to about the 10 inch mark. It's not a massive wound track. It doesn't look like anything crazy. Pretty standard for a 3030 Winchester. All in all, I am really happy with the performance. Let's dig these out and take a look at them. And let's go ahead and take a look at the velocities for that Cellier and Bellet 150 grain ammo. And that stuff was cooking right along. That stuff, I could tell it was hitting my shoulder a lot harder than other 3030 ammo. So let's take a look here, our high was 2419 wow our low was 2343 and our average was 2386 that stuff is smoking for a 150 grain load out of a 3030 my goodness all right y'all every once in a while we get some test results that absolutely knock my socks off and this is one of those. Here are those Cellier and Bellet 150 grain soft points as fired from the 3030 Winchester recovered out of the gel. And these things look absolutely incredible. The mushroom on these is perfect. It is concentric all the way around. We don't have a shard here or there sort of exaggerating the expansion number. These things mushroomed absolutely perfectly and they ticked every box. Let's go ahead and go over it. So weight retention wise, we saw 148 and 149 grains of retained weight for an average of 149 grains rounded up. That's 99% weight retention. Absolutely ludicrous for what I assume, what I think is a standard cup and core copper and lead bullet. These aren't anything special. And yes, I will point out that there is some ballistics gel wrapped up in the mushroom of these bullets. I tried to get some of it out, but I couldn't get it all out. The weight from that is very minimal. So actual weight retention might be something like 95%, still incredibly high for what these are. Very surprising results, incredible results. 
and it just keeps getting better. Expansion-wise, we saw 0.65 inches and 0.64 inches for an average, again rounded up, of 0.65 inches expanded diameter, and that is uniform all the way around each one of these bullets. Big surface area punching through to make a big old hole, and that works out to 2.1x expansion. Very, very good for the 3030. And now on to velocity, and that is where this load just blew everything else out of the water. When I fired this ammo, I could tell these things were loaded hot. They kicked harder, they made a bigger boom, and it bore out on the chronograph. The high velocity was 2419 feet per second, the low 2343 for an average of 2386 versus the factory build velocity of 2389. Now y'all, 3030 ammunition across the board almost never comes close to the factory stated velocity. This load was within three feet per second on average from the build velocity and the high velocity seen was substantially higher than the build velocity. Absolutely incredible, these things are a cannon. And then penetration wise, we saw 19 inches and 20 inches respectively. I wish I could have got the third bullet. It didn't work out. That works out to 19 and a half inches of penetration. That is pretty darn good. That's right up there at the 20 inch mark that I like to see for medium game hunting ammo. And it is in line with a lot of other 3030 loads I have tested. It's a little bit shallower on average than most of the 150 grain loads I've tested, but very consistent and no doubt that slightly shallower penetration is due to the absolutely massive expansion and even so that's still plenty of penetration for almost all the shots you're going to take on deer and now on to the kinetic energy these things came in way way up there with a 150 grain bullet going on average 2386 feet per second we're looking at 1896 foot pounds of kinetic energy at the muzzle that is substantially higher than almost all other 3030 ammunitions out there. And that is due entirely to that very high average velocity. These things are gonna hit hard. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on that Cellier and Bellet 150 grain soft point out of the 3030. Y'all, every once in a while, you come across a sleeper load, something that you didn't really expect to do what it did to perform as good as it did. And this Cellier and Bellet load is that. This thing is an absolute sleeper. Incredible performance and at an extremely affordable price. This is one of the cheapest 3030 loads available on the market. I think Privy Partisan is going to be a few dollars cheaper depending on where you look. But this stuff is cheap. It's cheaper than your Winchester Federal, um, Remington, any of that stuff. And it performed arguably better than a lot of those. So weight retention wise, 99%. Absolutely ludicrous for a cup and core copper and lead bullet. It doesn't say that it's bonded. Either way, bullet performance was incredible. Very high weight retention, excellent expansion, 2.1x expansion, and it was very, very consistent all the way around the circumference of the bullet. So it's going to make a big surface area to punch a big old hole through whatever you're shooting at, deer, hog, black bear, targets, whatever. But I'll digress on the black bear because with that expansion, there's always a trade-off with stuff came a little bit shallower penetration. We'll talk about that in a second. Velocity wise, that's where this load completely blew everything else out of the water. When I fired this load from my rifle, I could tell, I could tell when I look at that chronograph, it was gonna have a wild number on it because this stuff kicked harder than any other 150 grain 33 load. It made a louder boom. I could tell it was going fast. And the high velocity measured was actually 2,419 feet per second substantially higher than the build velocity from the factory. You never see that. You almost never see that, especially with 3030 ammo. The average velocity was 2386. That's right there within three feet per second of the factory build velocity. Absolutely insane. This stuff was loaded hot and I liked it. And then on to penetration, we got 19 and a half inches on average. That is a little bit shallower than a lot of your 150 grain 3030 soft point loads, 
but I think that's due to the wild expansion we saw with this stuff. 2.1x might not sound like that much. There's some loads that are more than that, but again, very consistent around the entire circumference of the bullet. It's not like there was a chunk here and there that made it 2.1x. It's the entire circumference of the frontal area of the bullet. So a big surface area punching through, I think is sort of hampering the penetration a little bit, but it's still really good. It's still right there on the cutting edge of 20 inches, which is great for all of your deer hunting. I am a big fan of this ammo. This stuff did incredible in my estimation. And then what's more kinetic energy wise for what that's worth, whatever you make of it, I believe this is the most powerful, the strongest 3030 load I have tested thus far with a 150 grain bullet going 2,386 feet per second on average. We're looking at 1,896 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. Right almost, if you were to measure the high velocity, the 2419, you would be over 1,900 foot-pounds of energy, way, way more than most of your 3030 loads out there. Most of your 150 grain 3030 loads are going to be in the 1,600 foot-pound range. This is quite a bit more than that. So this stuff is going to hit hard for a 3030 load. Very surprised, very pleased, very excited to have found this. And I look forward to actually using it myself. After seeing these results, I've got to get some more of this stuff and try and shoot some game with it to see how it performs on game. If you or anybody you know have used this ammo on game, let me and everyone else know in the comments how it did for you. Hey, if you enjoy these videos, check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. The link is in the video description. And check out my channel for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests. I have some big news. Lots of you have emailed me or commented how much value you get out of my videos. And you've asked me, how can you be a part of this and help support the channel? Well, I got to work and now I have a way. I've created a Patreon account where you can join me in helping our fellow hunters. Click the link in this video's description and watch my Patreon welcome video, where I describe to you how your help will impact this channel and our community of hunters as a whole. And when you join me on Patreon, you'll get a lot more than I can give you here on YouTube. You'll have to go watch that welcome video linked in the description to find out the details. I'll see you there.